Could there be an ocean beneath the Earth? The University of Alabama-led research found a layer between Earth's core and mantle that is likely a thin, dense, sunken ocean floor through global-scale seismic imaging of the Earth's interior. But how? Is it possible that there is an ocean beneath the Earth's surface? What temperature could it have? Could it contain living things? Come find out with us. Ultra Low Speed Zones ULVZ. To properly grasp this result, we must first examine the fundamental topic of the inquiry. The Ultra Low Speed Zones, also called ULVZ. ULVZs are enigmatic and interesting places beneath the Earth's crust that have baffled scientists for decades. These zones are located near our planet's core mantle interface, approximately 2,900 kilometers below the Earth's surface. ULVZs have a very different composition than the remainder of the mantle, which is mostly made up of magnesium and iron silicates. These zones are distinguished by their low seismic velocity, which causes seismic waves to slow down or even stop when they travel through them. This suggests that the density and composition of these structures in the Earth's interior differ greatly from those seen elsewhere in the mantle. One of the most widely accepted explanations for their creation is that they are related to subducted materials. Subduction happens when one tectonic plate sinks into the Earth's mantle after dipping beneath another. The minerals contained in these plates can withstand extremely high depths and temperatures, allowing them to be delivered to the core mantle interface. The density and composition discrepancies that characterize ULVZs are thought to be caused by these subducted minerals. ULVZs have been discovered all over the world, implying that they are not a local but rather a global feature of the Earth. Furthermore, these zones are thought to have substantial ramifications for the dynamics of the Earth's mantle and the planet's evolution. Because ULZVs cannot be seen because they are underground, how do we know they exist if we have never seen one? Scientists have investigated these structures using a variety of methodologies to learn more about their composition and origin. Seismic tomography, which employs seismic waves to study the Earth's internal structure, is one of these approaches. To create three-dimensional representations of the ULVZs, seismic data is integrated with theoretical models. High pressure and temperature mineralogy is another approach employed. High pressure, high temperature experiments are used to determine the stability of minerals at the depths and temperatures observed at the core mantle contact. These investigations reveal which minerals are likely to be stable under these conditions and create structures in the planet's interior. The work, which was published in the journal Science Advances, added to our understanding of the makeup of the ULVZ. The authors of the study employed molecular dynamic simulations to investigate the stability of several minerals. According to the findings, minerals containing iron and silicon, such as ferropericlase, may be stable under these conditions. As a result, these elements may build megastructures surrounding the mantle. The researchers also performed geochemical analyses on Earth's mantle materials. They discovered evidence for the presence of these minerals in the lower mantle, lending credence to the notion that ULVZs are made up of subducted materials. Understanding these massive formations is critical because they can have substantial ramifications for the dynamics of the Earth's mantle. ULVZs can operate as material flow barriers in the mantle, affecting heat distribution in the Earth's interior. They may also play an important part in the formation of mantle plumes, which are updrafts of heated material rising from the mantle to the surface. Furthermore, they are thought to be linked to the genesis of some of the most puzzling geological structures on Earth, such as the famed South Atlantic Magnetic Anomaly. The South Atlantic Magnetic Anomaly It is a geophysical phenomenon that has confounded scientists for centuries. The South Atlantic Ocean region where the Earth's magnetic field is substantially lower than expected based on geographic location. This region, which runs from South America to Africa, has been the focus of extensive scientific research and discussion. 
The magnetic field of Earth is created by moving the planet's liquid iron inner core. Because it protects the planet's atmosphere and surface from solar and cosmic radiation, the magnetic field is critical for life on Earth. This field, however, is not homogeneous across the globe and differs depending on geographic location. AMAS is one of the world's most prominent magnetic anomalies and is thought to be caused by a mix of reasons. For starters, the South Atlantic region is noted for its abundance of volcanic and sedimentary rocks rich in iron and other magnetic minerals. In some regions, these minerals can distort and decrease the Earth's magnetic field. Furthermore, it is thought to be related to the mechanics of the Earth's outer core. The outer core is a constantly moving layer of liquid iron that surrounds the inner core. This movement has the potential to generate electrical currents in the outer core, which in turn generates the Earth's magnetic field. These electric currents are thought to be disrupting the magnetic field in the South Atlantic region. In recent decades, geological and geophysical investigations have been conducted in the area to better understand the cause of this anomaly. Magnetometry, which measures the strength and direction of the Earth's magnetic field, is one of the most commonly used methods in these investigations. Satellites have also been utilized by scientists to map this area from orbit. Scientists were able to generate precise maps of the anomaly and evaluate its distribution and characteristics thanks to the data obtained by these satellites. Scientists have discovered that this anomaly has significant consequences for navigation and communication as they have gone deeper into this region. The South Atlantic region's weak magnetic field can interfere with compasses and other navigational equipment, posing a risk to ships and airplanes passing there. Furthermore, this low magnetism zone might interfere with satellite transmission and other telecommunication equipment. The weak magnetic field in the region can affect cosmic radiation penetrating the Earth's atmosphere, causing communication system difficulties. The research into the South Atlantic magnetic anomaly has also helped us better grasp the structure of our planet. We discovered that ultra-low speed zones occur within the planet as a result of this. However, we have discovered structures of enormous mountains the size of mountains that look to be old oceans. Buried Oceans and Mountains The research, directed by research fellow Samantha E. Hansen of the University of Alabama's Department of Geological Sciences, recently conducted seismic wave surveys in the Southern Hemisphere and Antarctica. These offered the highest resolution views of our planet's interior structure, and we learned that the internal structures of our planet are far more sophisticated than previously assumed. For the first time, the research was able to investigate a wide portion of the Southern Hemisphere in high resolution using a comprehensive method that examines the echoes of sound waves from the core mental barrier. Hansen and his colleagues discovered unexpected energy in seismic data that arrived several seconds after the reflected wave at the boundary. These small signals were utilized to map a changeable layer of material over the research region that is pencil-thin yet several tens of kilometers long, which is somewhat surprising given that the Earth's major layers are hundreds of kilometers thick. The anomalous lining of the core mental border has significant reductions in wave velocity. It is made of the same materials as ultra-low velocity zones. These ULVZ finds are readily explained by ancient oceanic seafloors sinking to the core mantle barrier as a result of continental plate sinking. Oceanic material is transported towards the planet's interior, where two tectonic plates collide and one collapses beneath the other, creating subduction zones. Subducted oceanic material accumulates along the core mantle barrier and is pushed by slowly flowing rock in the mantle over geologic time. The variety and distribution of such material explain the range of attributes observed. ULVZs, which range in height from less than 3 miles to more than 25 miles, can be called mountains at the core mantle barrier. This implies that mountains up to 5 times higher than Mount Everest exist beneath the Earth's surface, near the core. That instance, there are remnants of what was a continental plate thousands of years ago that included oceans the size of the Pacific Ocean and mountains the size of Mount Everest but are now several thousand kilometers below the surface. 
But don't let your imagination go wild just yet. This does not imply that our globe contains an internal realm similar to the one described by Jules Verne in his book Journey to the Center of the Earth. These structures are simply ancient relics of the Earth's surface that have been discovered very close to the core under severe pressures and temperatures of more than 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit, 5,000 degrees Celsius, temperatures that no living thing could survive. While liquid water or living beings cannot dwell in the Earth's core, these deep mountains may influence how heat escapes from the core, which generates the planet's magnetic field. Furthermore, material from ancient ocean floors can become trapped in mantle plumes or hot spots that return to the surface via volcanic eruptions, implying that these structures may someday find up back on the surface, returning to their original location. Other theories about the genesis of these formations within our planet say that they are the product of the moon's formation. This concept is based on the idea that the moon formed from the impact of Thea, a massive body the size of Mars that collided with the Earth 4.5 billion years ago. Much of the Earth's crust was lifted several kilometers into space and subsequently redeposited on Earth, but was buried by the rest of the collision's debris and boulders. A major portion of the scientific community endorses this hypothesis since it would explain why these structures are found all across the planet rather than just in certain locations. It explains why the Earth's axis is inclined, in addition to the impact of Thea. Although there is no convincing evidence, science is gradually bringing us closer to discovering the truth. Finally, research into the Earth's core reminds us of our world's amazing complexity and how much remains to be uncovered. We can better grasp our role in the universe and how to live in harmony with our planet if we continue to discover the secrets of Earth's core. Alright everyone, here's where the video ends. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.